okay so we've got some tools in our toolkit let's try to use them to do some processing some examples first let's try to see if we can write a regular expression to find words that start with a vowel right so we already know the anchor for starting that is the carrot and we also know the uh, the regular expression the pattern for choice which is uh, one among many characters and that's the square bracket so we can combine these two to solve this particular problem so here is our thing and then the regular expression is simply carrot which say starts with any one of these characters because that's in square brackets we put all the vowels so any word that starts with a, any one of these characters will match and that's of course so that solves the problem okay so that's how you you've used both uh, the choice options and the anchor for start to solve this particular problem now let's see this is a little more difficult how about words that contain only consonants right that means words that have no vowels at all this is a little more tricky right because of course we could uh, see the again the problem is it says contains only consonants so it's not enough to simply put the option and just include all the consonants because that only says that uh, it has consonants right it doesn't leave out the fact that it should also not have vowels right so what we need to say is that it starts has several consonants and ends okay that's it no vowel appears so that uses an uh, a representation that we have not discussed so far take a look at this example okay str underscore view words so we are using the words data the uh, data frame from the string r package and our pattern says it starts with right and then it says square bracket square bracket none of these characters right so remember the when the character appears within square brackets it says those are those don't appear it's the negative so we're saying it starts and then has something other than a e i o u something other than a vowel and then plus plus is something we've not discussed so far plus stands for one or more of the prior thing Right? That means it says it starts and has one or more of a non-vowel, meaning one or more consonants. Okay, so it starts has one or more consonants because the plus uh, uh, applies to whatever precedes it, and then ends. Okay, that means uh, it's got a string of consonants, string of non-vowels, and then it simply ends. Okay, so this pattern doesn't give it any chance for a vowel to sneak in anywhere because it says it starts has one or more non-vowels and simply ends. So this is a kind of uh, slightly tricky one to write, but that's a good example of how we can do this. So if you want to find all the words that have only consonants, you can use this. Let's take one more example. How about trying to find words that end with ed, but not eed, right? So this will match studied, but will not match speed. Okay, so that's what we want here. So let's see. So I've just put together some examples because uh, I've added two words here, ned and need. So it should match ned, should not match need. Okay, uh, so let's see here. So look at this here. So we're saying it starts with anything other than any, then ends with ed, not starts with, sorry, because starts with would have been a carrot here. So we're saying it somewhere it contains a character other than e and then has ed and ends dollar okay so this will only match anything that ends with something other than e followed by ed okay so that's just another way of uh, that's just a way of achieving this thing right? so the the negation character uh, using caret for negation within square brackets is a very important pattern to say anything other than this Okay, now the problem with this is that this will not match the string ed all by itself. After all, the string ed ends with ed, right? So that should definitely match, but it doesn't match this. So in that case, uh, we can do it differently. So we've got uh, just the string uh, ed itself added just to test this. So we're just saying uh, starts with ed uh, and ends with ed or the previous one. Right. So we just added a separate class for this. And in this, what we did is we used the vertical bar as the option. So it's either this ED all by itself or it's 
something other, it ends with something other than E followed by E. So we use that to solve this problem. In similar vein, how about finding words that end with ing or isc? So clearly what we can say is it's got to end with, so which means there's going to be a dollar uh, on the right side. And it says ind, ing or isc, which means i followed by ng or se. So it's going to be i followed by ng or se. We put this in parentheses because otherwise it would mean ending with ing or uh, or se. That's not right, right. So we could do it this way. I followed by ng or se or alternately of course we could have said ing vertical bar ise. That's not really nice because it repeats the i. Okay, So this might be a better way to do it. On the other hand ing slash ic looks simple so that also might work. Okay let's do one more. We know that one of the rules in the English language is that a q is always followed by a u. Now, is that true? I mean, does our words data frame have any counter examples? In other words, does it have any words in which a q is actually followed by something other than a u? So we can use regular expressions to test it out. Right? So we can say str view words and match for the pattern q followed by something other than a u. That equals true. Right? So this will catch any word in which the q appears followed by something other than u. Right? Because the rule says q must always be followed by a u, by a u and we want a counter example. So we are saying look find a word in which there is a q. There is something other than a u that follows the q. Okay? And in fact if you try it out you will find that there is actually no such match. There is a little bit more that I want to cover in regular expressions. But at the same time, I don't want to overload this week's material. So we'll stop here. I'll give you some examples and assignments to practice on so that you completely grasp what I've already covered. And then we we'll look at somewhat slightly more advanced examples in the next week. We'll finish uh, regular expressions next week and then continue with other topics that I have planned. Okay, so this is, the, uh, this is all I'll be covering for this week.